Hello. Welcome back. How have you been? I've been here, sitting alone in this dark void, just waiting for your arrival. I'm glad you're here though. Why don't you take a seat? I've got some food. Yeah, enough of that creepy intro. I know why you're really here. You want to know if the title is really true. Well, you're gonna have to wait and see. In order to truly appreciate the destination, we need to experience the journey. And don't you dare to skip to the end of the video. I see all of you, you little- I get a lot of questions asking what software I use. With a topic engraved in my mind, I figured I'd make a video about it. But then it lost in the polls. Ooh, okay, that's fine. I, I didn't I didn't want to do a video about it anyways. Want to know what did win in the polls though? This. This dumb idea that I came up with. I didn't think anyone would actually vote for it. But hey, if this is what the people want, this is what they want. Oh hey, I'm gonna reveal how I came up with this little robot's name at the end of the video. Your name was used. You'll see what I mean. Sorry for interrupting. Pretend this never happened. But don't forget what I said. Just pretend that I wasn't ever here. So, yeah. Luckily, I remembered to log my development process. We'll run through that, then I'll show you where you can access the software. After that, I'll give you a little tutorial and show you how to use it, and then we'll make a little dumb animation with it. Let's get into it, I guess. I started with a simple design in Google Slides. I wanted it to be flexible and simple to use. Now that I had a concept down, I went to choose a programming language. There are a lot of really good programming languages out there that would be perfect for this task. But I like to make life difficult for myself, so I chose JavaScript. Not even Node.JavaScript, JavaScript. Oh hey, future Ethan here. I just wanted to tell you that I regret that so much. You don't even know. Okay, so JavaScript may not be the best idea for this, but it does have a little cool thing that comes with it. It's a little known feature called HTML. It allows for structuring of websites, sort of like what I'm doing. Oh, so you're gonna use that to make it, you ask? Once again, I like to suffer, so I decided to render everything from scratch, by hand. We were obviously off to a great start. I began working on the window system. I even created a helpful little list of things to do, but I never used it again. After struggling to deal with never-ending math and errors screaming in my face in agony, I got this little system working. It creates little windows that you can move and adjust around. Nice. After all of that, I started to work on the scene view. I added object functionality and got that all working. After some bizarre errors and glitches, some objects can now be rendered. Nice. However, it was super unorganized. And so I moved on to the outliner. This is relatively easy to make. You could create objects, and I even added the ability to change the name of objects directly. But this feature was buggy, and instead of fixing it like a normal person, I just pretended it never existed. After the outliner was somewhat presentable, I moved on to gizmos. Which happens to be the name a few of you chose for my little robot friend. I'm getting distracted, but I thought that was cool. Gizmos are little controls that you can use to move stuff around. Up until this point, I've been making this all sound really easy, but I've been hiding something. Moving around was indeed easy, but rotation? <laughs> Allow me to introduce rotation. Alright, here we are. So, basically what we're doing is we have this. And so the angles and stuff, I am confused about them. You can see these angles already don't match and it's super confusing and yeah. So I'm plotting it to 90 degrees right here. And then that's where 90 degrees is. So then I go on my whiteboard and I write down 90 here. And so then I'm going to do the same for every angle and then figure out because every every single function in javascript seems to be using a different angle like what so this is the unit circle that draw arc uses 0 90 180 270 sure that's fine but then a10 uses a completely different circle so we have 0 90 180 and negative 90 so then negative 180 is right here too Okay, sure, but then my own system uses <laughs> its own 0, 90, 180, 270. And this one makes the most sense to me. But what is this? What is this? I figured it out after, after lots of Desmos and help from embeddedmath.com. Thank you so much. I came to this. So we have our three different circles that I know of. There may be more. This, the, these are the equations to convert from these to my own. From a tan to my own, I just need to take 180 subtracted by theta. Theta is just how you represent angles in trigonometry. And that's it. Ugh. I tried to add the ability to rotate objects around each other if you select more than one. It was super unstable though and a huge pain. So here's a montage of that pain. <laughs>
What did I do with that? Once again, I removed the feature and pretended it never existed. So I moved on to the scale gizmo. Surely scale would be much easier than rotation, right? Well, that also turned into a buggy mess. I pushed through it though, right? Right? <laughs> no. No, I swept it under the rug and pretended it never existed. So I moved on to the timeline. <laughs> At this point, you couldn't even animate in this animation software. So if I released the video now, the video would be clickbait and then I'd get cancelled on Twitter and I'd have to make an apology video. So I started working on the timeline. I made the core animation first and it works like this. So there's a parent. That parent has a bunch of little babies. Each one of those little babies is responsible for stalking and controlling one value. That parent will tell their babies to run off and apply a keyframe. They all follow and run off and do their little thing. They all apply their own value on that keyframe. Then they all run back. It works really, really well, uh, which is very surprising considering I made it. I got working on the timeline, but I ran into another big problem. I had no idea how to code zooming in and zooming out across one dimension. I was about ready to pretend that feature never existed in the first place, but I got it working before I could give up. <laughs> Keyframes now work too, not without a fight and struggle of course. I realized that I needed a right click functionality in order to make that work, but I had no idea how to do that. So to Google I went. I quickly got something working which as you can tell works 100% perfectly. And I totally didn't waste an hour getting distracted by making cursed photoshops of my dog. That did not happen, I promise. The timeline was pretty much done, so I started to work on the properties. It went fairly well, I just had to code a system that could render out values and change them at will. I coded a color selector for a bit, which took an absurd amount of math. It worked though. Once properties were done, I moved on to a feature that I've been neglecting for a long time. Parenting. I looked into the math behind it and... <laughs> I was so tempted to pretend the software didn't have that feature. But no, I'm not going to give up this time. I need to push through. After a crazy amount of weird behavior, it literally worked. I wanted to work on the image bank next. After looking up how images are handled on websites, I was able to get it working and BAM! You could upload your own images! Now that you could upload custom images, I was able to create some little rigs, like the circus baby rig. I'll put a bunch of links in the description if you want to play around with some rigs that I made, and yeah. After that, I worked on filters and rendering. Both were really simple. Then I was left with one last thing. There is something that I've been keeping from you. Throughout all of this, you've never been able to undo. <gasps> I know, I can hear your angry cries and pitchforks, but hey, at least I didn't pretend this feature never existed. I absolutely dreaded this feature. I figured this would take days, weeks, months, years, decades, centuries to, to get working. I was absolutely terrified when I started coding. And then I finished it in three hours. I was ecstatic. I stepped back and realized that I was pretty much done. The software was pretty good. I did some tidying up here and there, and here we are now, all finished. You're probably wondering how to access the software by now. What do you need to download? What are the minimum specs? Well, I've got news for you. I chose JavaScript, and because of that, there is no download. It's a website. Simply go to bit.ly slash coasterstudio, and that's it. I'm gonna walk you through how to use it, and then I'll share my little dumb animation with you all. Welcome to Coaster Studios. I'm going to show you briefly how to use the software and then yeah. So when you don't have any objects added like you will at the very beginning, you'll have your scene properties and these are just your, this controls the camera where you can control all of your stuff. Each of these are properties that you can play around with. All of these, if they have a little dot next to it, they're anim animatable. And if you click that dot, it'll add a keyframe at that position. So then if you move over here, and go 250 frames and add another dot, then the camera will be animated. When you do that, you can right click on a keyframe to set it to linear, which means it'll move linearly, or left right click again to delete that frame, and that will do that. Once you have that, you can also change the width and height of your camera, and this will, this will change the file size, like the dimensions when you export it. Over here you have the buttons that you can use to toggle the stats, you can toggle the sky, you can toggle the camera visibility, and you can toggle the grid. This button right here will recenter you back into the grid if you get lost. This is auto key, so if you if you play around with a with a value like this and then move over, you won't need to re-keyframe it like that. It'll just it'll just do it for you. And so that's what auto key is for. 
To save a scene, you hit save scene and it'll download accordingly. To load a scene, all you have to do is drag and drop that scene or just hit load scene and then it'll ask you for your file. This is your image bank. You can open it right here and you can drag and drop any images here or you can click the plus button to add images. This is what you're going to use if you want to use custom images. Each of these windows can be resized by grabbing this little bar here and you can resize them to fit your needs. Um, you can also change them around. So say you want to split this here and you want this to be cropped with the outliner and you want this to be the main scene view. That is totally something that you can do. If you want to add an object, click the plus button and then select the object type that you want. Let's add a circle. And so the circle will be created, switch over to your object properties, and you'll see all of your properties. You can change the name of the circle. You can change the parent. Right now we don't have any objects, so we can't parent it. You can change the type, so you could have a triangle, or a rectangle, or an image, etc, etc. Like with the camera, you can change the position, and you can also animate these properties because they have a little dot next to it. The rotation works just the same and you can even change the scale if you so desire. You can also change the color of the object if you would like just by turning the style here. If you particularly like a color, click the plus button and it'll, say, and it'll save it for you. This top bar will show your current color and the bottom bar will show the last color. So you can click here and save and you can add as much as you want. And if you go over, it'll just add more space underneath it, just like so. Objects can also have filters. Filters allow you to do a bunch of things with them. So you can, for instance, blur out an image like this, just like so. And that'll blur the image. You can also go here. You can change the hue of the image if you want. You can't really see it with Cody here. You can create as much filters as you'd like, and you can remove them all if you so desire. Outliner. All you have to do is right click, duplicate, and then right click to delete. If you have a bunch of objects and you want to move them all around together, you can click each object or hold shift and click more than one. Then they will all move along your axis accordingly. This does not work for rotation or for scale. They all rotate and scale by their own individual axes. Moving objects around from the Properties tab can get a bit tedious. Instead, you can use these gizmos. The X controller will move it on the X, the, the Y will move it on the Y. The center white block will also move it freestyle. You can use the rotation to rotate it around, and you can use the scale to scale it around. With the rotation, if you hold control, you can snap it to the nearest 45 degree angle. You can also export objects with this export button and it'll download the object. You can drag and drop it to create more of that same type of object right here. Once you have your beautiful image done, you can hit render frame, which will download the, uh, the current render, or you can hit render animation. Once you do, you'll be taken to the screen and it'll render your animation for you. And that about wraps up the software. I'm super excited to see what you all animate with it. As for me, well, <laughs> I animated this I think it's it's top notch. <laughs> that was something for sure. We should probably move on to the part that I promised from the beginning. The part that I know you are all most excited for. How I came up with the robot's name. I got over 1,000 name suggestions. I figured randomly picking one was too boring and unfair. So I came up with an idea. I'll collect all of the names, find the average length. The average length was 7. Great. Now I'll find the most common first letter of all of the names suggested. Then the second, then the third, etc, etc, until we reach 7. Then, I'll combine them all, and ta-da, everyone's name will be used, kinda. 
Well, I should probably reveal it. Drum roll, please. And there it is. A rotter. <laughs> you know, it's not perfect, but I think it fits him. We all came up with it collectively, and I like it. I think you will too. Well, anyways, it's currently 2 a.m. and I'm so tired. I should probably end the video here. Thanks for watching all the way through, it means a ton. You should click that thumbs up button because my robot doesn't have thumbs. Subscribe and ring the bell, they both make fun noises, so do that. I need to sleep, and you probably should too. So, good night!